Hi, this is Steve Palladino from Palladino Power Project, and I'm uh, bringing you a, uh, a topic today that we're going to be um, uh, utilizing the superpower calculator, but I'll present a couple of their uh, options um, for doing this uh, goal feasibility assessment. And, you know, this is a time of year where, where people are thinking ahead to the, the following year and uh, they want to get a Boston qualifier or, or, you know, break 40 minutes in a 10K or break 32 minutes in a 10K or break three hours in a marathon. Whatever the case may be, people are thinking about their next season's goals. Um, and what I'm going to uh, start off by saying is, it's a good idea to assess your goal feasibility by looking at the percentage of improvement that's needed. Um, so, you know, if, if uh, you're looking at your goals, uh, whether it's a power goal or a time goal or what have you, and, and you're seeing uh, that oh, I, there's a, you know, I need a 20% improvement, uh, that could be a big stretch. Um, on the other hand, if it's something like a two or three percent improvement, that can be easily uh, achievable for, for for some individuals. So let's talk about that just a little bit more. Um, there are a number of factors that determine the percent of improvement that that's feasible um, from say a year over year or, or you know in, in four months, what have you. So let's look at those. Uh, the first one is uh, where you're at at the starting point. You know your fitness, your health, your training history. I mean, if you're if you're starting a build for a a marathon or what have you, and you're you're hobbling, your Achilles is bobbing, or what have you, um, the likelihood of you really successfully completing your your training plan or your block without any setbacks is a little bit lower. Um, and your training history, uh, it, uh, someone that is newer to running is gonna get far bigger percentage of improvements, far greater gains in shorter periods of time than someone that's been at it, you know, running structured workouts uh, and uh, training at, you know, at the maximal amount of time that they have in a given week uh, for quite some time. You know, elites might be, uh, you know, looking for a half of a percent improvement is a, is, is a difference between, you know, uh, not being on the podium and an Olympic gold medal. Uh, so um, the starting point is, is an important consideration, where you're at at the starting point. Um, the, uh, the nature of the training is also important. If you're training for a marathon, you want to be more marathon specific, and you have to look at volume and the frequency of training. And you know, to to there's various studies that have been uh, put out there where they have demonstrated that you know uh, to to run X amount of time, it'd be better if you ran um, X amount of volume and and X amount of time number of times per week, etc. So um, those are all factors, the nature of the training. If someone's just sort of willy-nilly training and they, they're, you know, they have a goal, an improvement for 20% improvement or even, even a 5% improvement and they're willy-nilly training as opposed to they're in a, a structured program that, that has great specificity and is individualized to them, proper volume and frequency, and a TID, by the way, is training intensity distribution. The, the amount, right mix of easy running and higher, various higher intensity um, uh, training. Um, that can make a difference. You know, you, you, you're gonna get more out of a, a structured uh, plan that's individualized and specific for the event that you're, you're uh, building for. Um, and consequently, uh, likely a higher percent of improvement than, than you know, just a willy-nilly, as-you-go sort of training plan. Um, consi consistency determines percent of improvement. Uh, you know, 
compliance. Life gets in the way. Sometimes you have to skip workout. Sometimes you're not motivated and skip workout. But the greater the compliance, um, the greater the consistency, the greater the likelihood of improvement to an extent. I've got to put a caveat here. There can be days where you're feeling really ragged, really rough, and um, the, the, in those, on those days, it's better to skip a day. I, I like the concept of leave it out. Uh, if in doubt, leave it out. Um, because you run on a day when you're really ragged, you're, you're, you have a little niggle, you know, something's bothering you. Um, that can set you over <laughs> into injury or illness. Uh, that's why I have these uh, set up because um, injury and illness avoidance is as important as overall consistency. In fact, injury illness avoidance contributes to consistency. So those are both intertwined uh, factors that do determine a percent of improvement. Um, the individual responsiveness to the, the training prescriptions is an important. You could have two athletes and you give them um, similar uh, training structures, uh, training intensity distribution, you know, you know, plans, et cetera, et cetera. But one responds better to the, 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 the types of workouts that are being prescribed and the other is less. So one's going to get more responsiveness. They're going to get a higher percent of improvement um, in theory. So uh, the individual responsiveness is important. And then, of course, uh, it's not just where you start, but it's how long are you working at it you know, consistently with the right training program is how long. So are we looking at um, do you want 5% improvement in four months or do you want 5% improvement year over year? Uh, so the, the feasibility um, probably grows as the duration of the, uh, the, the time interval between now and the A race. So that's an important consideration. How long are you going to be doing all of this? Uh, and that will also determine the percent of improvement that you might get. And then lastly, you could do all of these things right. Um, you know, being consistent, having the right training plan, the right training program. You're responsive to it. You're, you're improving and you do it for, you know, whatever, you know, four, six, 12 months. And you're getting these great improvements in your, your critical power or functional threshold power. You're getting great improvements in your fatigue resistance. You're able to do longer and longer long runs or more intervals of the same type. So fatigue resistance is growing. Your FTP, uh, your critical power, and even some of your, your higher intensity, you know, maybe your five minute power is improving, et cetera, if, you're, if it's like a 5K race. You can have all of those things go right, but if you show up on race day and it's, it's a bad day, it's, it's a real windy day or it's a very hot day, um, you're not going to manifest you're not going to manifest that percent of improvement that you might have gotten in your, your fitness. And the same thing with your execution. Um, if the race is well executed, it's close to ISO power, meaning this, you know, pretty close to the same power throughout. You're not starting way too hard and fading or saving too much and, and you know, uh, saving it too much too long. And so you're not really getting the most out of yourself. Um, those things, those execution factors can also uh, change what kind of percent improvement you manifest in the end. So these are all factors that determine percent of improvement. So how do you put them together on, you know, what's, what's, what's good, what's, what's reasonable, what's feasible? Well, you know, if you're if you're an elite athlete or you're an athlete that's been training, you know, five, six, seven, eight years and you've been in a good structured plan, there's, there is a lot of diminishing returns as you get closer and closer to your theoretical max. And so, you know, expecting a 5% improvement when you've been training for six, eight years in a good, good structured plan 
it's, it's probably not reasonable. You might be looking more like a one, two, three percent improvement. Three percent is big. Um, on the other hand, if you're uh, you know a runner that's new to structured training, um, or a runner that's that is uh, you know has less training history, you know a couple of years of training history, you might get bigger improvements. You know in in the eight to 10% range year over year. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty uncommon that, to see big you know, 20% gains year over year, uh, unless you have someone that's just you know, very new to training, never done structured training, and then they go into this and they, they thrive and they get this big improvement. So you have to sort of, you know, uh, look at what your goals are in the context of percent improvement. Now, with power, you have a, a, a great sort of anchor, um, which is your critical power, your functional threshold power. And that's a good metric for most, most of the uh, distance races that are being run commonly. Basically, 5K through the marathon um, you're 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 running within a, a small percentage of, of functional threshold power. You're probably running somewhere on the order of you know plus or minus plus or minus eight to ten percent of your functional threshold power. So that's a good marker for tracking percent improvement. Um, so again, if uh, you're, you know, a, a long-time runner in a structured program. You're going to be looking at lower percents of improvement year over year, or in a six-month time, um, versus a person who is uh, relatively new to structured training and uh, uh, less training history. Uh, and then also you can throw in the factor of age as well. Um, a younger, you know, adolescent athlete, you know, they they're they're going to be growing, you know. Three, four, five percent year over year for 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 four or five years in a row, um, and then they start diminishing. Um, whereas an older athlete, a, you know, a, a an or athlete in their forties, fifties, um, particularly if they've been training in a structured program for a long time, they're they're going to be looking at smaller and smaller gains, or they'll be fighting just for hey, I, I want to do as good next year as I did this last year. Uh, so let me go into how to actually look at this. What, do you, the, what percent of improvement am I looking at if I, this is my goal? Um, so let, let's look at that. Now I'm going to go to the superpower calculator. And there are many, many functions within that. But if you scroll down... Uh, to this one. It'll be down in the what if section. Um, and given my current FTP or CP, uh, what percentage of improvement in those uh, that particular metric do I need to break uh, a, a, a XYZ time? Uh, so I have that. And uh, with the superpower calculator, the, the gold... Um, uh, entry fields are required, uh, the blue are optional, and the green is the result that you're looking for. So let's look at this. I'm just going to put in an imaginary runner uh, who weighs 70 kilograms. Um, with the superpower calculator, you can come over to most uh, entry, um, uh, entry fields and change the units. So I'm using kilograms, not pounds, but you could select pounds if you want. 70 kilogram runner who has an FTP or CP of 310 watts um, currently. All right, that's the current, what your uh, FTP is or, or critical power. Um, what your prior race time is. So let's say the, the runner has run a three hour and 20 minute marathon in this example. And they want to figure out 
what they need to do to run a three hour marathon. So these will all, all these entry fees will, will be gold that are, or entry fields will be gold and you have to enter them in. So you enter your time, you could change your distance. Let's say you're uh, you know, doing a 10K or a half marathon, a 5K, et cetera. Those are pre-built in here. So um, I, I, for this example, I'm using a marathon. So you put in the, the prior, your, what your prior time is, let's say this year's time, um, and next year you wanna break three hours um, over a similar marathon, similar terrain, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I put in marathon. They're going to need a Rigel exponent. Now, there's a couple ways of doing that. You could actually put a number in here. Um, and we have down at the bottom, we have a sort of a, a suggestion uh, field here. So let's say I'm looking at three-hour marathon. We're looking at it roughly about... Um, a uh, minus 0 0.08 to minus 0 0.09 um, Rigel exponent. So uh, you can find that in the Rigel's uh, tab here. Or you could simplify things. Um, if you would just, you know, you don't want to fine tune it and look at, you know, start playing with different Rigel's uh, by manually entering, you put up blue, look up Rigel. And it'll just take these times and it'll sort of draw in that exponent. In this case, you can see it's using a minus 0 0.09. Now, let's say you're great at endurance. You know yours is actually minus 0 0.08. Well, you, you come back here and you just manually enter your minus 0 0.08. But for this example, I'm going to use the lookup Rigel where it draws in um, this table. It just sort of does that work for you. Um, you're going to need a running effectiveness. Now, if you have a prior marathon, you can look at your running effectiveness from that uh, prior marathon, assuming you're using the same pod, or, you know, you have a wind pod and non-wind stride pod. They have different running effectiveness um, because of the air power added to it. So um, you want to use a running effectiveness you can use it from a prior marathon or you can do marathon power tempos in your training. Let's say you have some recent marathon power tempos, particularly if they're incorporated within a long run um, where there's already some fatigue on board, then you could use their running effectiveness from that run segment, assuming that it's a similar terrain. You know, it's not super hilly. Uh, segment that you did marathon power on and you're actually going to be racing flat, um, that's not comparable. So you want to use a running effectiveness from a similar intensity, for example, marathon power, um, tempo that you've done in training on similar terrain, uh, you know, relatively flat or relatively rolling, what have you. Um, in this case, I just entered 0 0.93 just to, to complete the example. Um, um, so there are, um, uh, you scroll down here and you're going to see that to uh, run a three hour marathon with running effectiveness of 0 0.93, you're going to need a functional threshold power or critical power of 330 watts. Uh, the, um, the improvement, the percent improvement is actually calculated here. So for this hypothetical runner, uh, 70 kilograms, currently 310 watts, uh, has run a 320, wants to run a three hour marathon, we use lookup Rigel, and we know that the running effectiveness is around 0 0.93. Um, if you want, you can you can bracket it. You could, okay, let's say, hey, I'm my running effectiveness might improve to 0 0.94. Then you scroll down here, and you can see now it's only 326 watt uh, F, uh, critical power or FTP, and the percent improvement 
uh, over your current 310 is about 5.32%. Um, but we're going to go back and use this to complete this example. So this, this runner is at 310, wants to run a three-hour marathon, run 320, and to do so, they're going to need about a 330-watt critical power FTP, and that's about 6.5%. Four five percent. So if I had a runner that had been just training, train, you know, just training a great training plan and been doing for the last couple of years uh, to get to that three twenty, then another six point four five percent might be a stretch. They might be, if you know, three to five percent at best. You know, um, on the other hand, if, if this was their an athlete's first marathon, it, you know, they, they, they did okay with their training plan, but now they're stepping it up. They're adding, say, another day of training. They're going to get a little bit higher volume on their long runs. Then, then this 6.45% uh, might be readily achievable. So you have to sort of put it in context of percent improvement and you know, what, what, looking at those various factors that we discussed at the beginning of the video. Now, there are other ways besides a superpower calculator. I'm going to go into those really briefly. Um, uh, and one of the ways uh, is that I wrote uh, articles called the Power to Run articles. Um, and I, I made one for marathon, one for half marathon, one for 10K. And basically what this does is it, it provides tables for various critical sub, sub mark, you know, magic mark, um, and then does the math for you. Um, what it requires is that, um, you know, understand that the watts per kilogram here, that if you're doing your own calculations, you got to use your stride weight, your stride weight setting um, to calculate those watts per kilogram. Um, the Rigel exponents that I use, whereas in the superpower calculator, you can be a little bit more fine-tuned with it. Here, I just put in some assumptions uh, for, for these uh, tables. Um, and the running effectiveness, you have to scroll to what is specific to you. Um, it's based on either prior marathon or prior 10K or whatever the race you're you're looking at, and uh, or training uh, training done at that intensity on a similar terrain. You look up the running effectiveness, and that allows you to to scroll through this. Um, okay, the other thing to remember, I have all these caveats on each one of them is that if, if your uh, pod reports distance in error, then the time outcome may be slightly different, um, you know, within 1% or, or the usual error uh, of a pod distance uh, measuring. So let's, uh, let me give you an example. Again, I, I have a marathon, half marathon, 10K. Um, let's get away from the the, ten, the marathon and let's go to 10K. Let's say someone wants to run a 35-minute 10K. All right? Here are the tables. So run a 35-minute uh, 10K, and let's say your 10, typical 10K running effectiveness is 0 0.94 in this example then you're going to need uh, a race power. You're going to need to run at 5.07 watts per kilogram to hit that 35 minute. And you're going to need an FTP of 4.9. Now, if you wanted to do the percent, you go to your, um, your power center or whatever platform you're using, find your, your current FTP or critical power in watts per kilogram and compare your current with what this projected FTP is. Again, this column is what 
the power has to be in the race to hit that time with that running effectiveness. So you need to run 5.07, 0 0.94 um, running effectiveness will give you a 35 minute uh, 10K. Um, and you need 4.94. So if you take your current and you um, d divide your, your what you need by your current, that's going to give you a percent. Um, and that's the percent improvement. Again, apply the same concept, the same factors in determining whether that percent is feasible for you or not. I will um, link these various uh, tables in here um, in the, uh, the notes, uh, the description of this uh, video. Uh, lastly, there's, there's one other method. Stride has an outstanding race uh, planner. And uh, you can also use the race planner to figure out your current and your future, let's say a target time that you want to hit, say a three hour marathon. Um, you, can, you can also estimate that and use that to calculate your percentage of improvement that you needed. Um, uh, this is a uh, webinar that I believe Evan may be bringing to you. And if, uh, if it's done, I will add it to the, the notes here as well. So you can actually watch that specific webinar on how to do your feasibility assessment of your goal using the Stride Race Power Planner. So there you have it. Um, you want to uh, assess your, your uh, goals in terms of percentage of improvement, particularly looking at your uh, critical power if, if you're looking at standard race dis distances between 5K and, and marathon. Um, and you can do that with the superpower calculator, uh, or you can do it with various tables, or you can do it with a stride race planner. Um, so uh, thank you for watching. I hope this helps um, in terms of getting your, uh, your goals aligned with, with um, what's feasible. And um, I look forward to, to bringing you the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.